Hey, hey, party people. Let's talk about how to do work when you don't feel like doing any freaking work. Okay, not really. Today, we are going to continue my super geeky series on the principles of design as applied to fashion. We are going to be studying unity and variety using Simone Rocha as a case study. FYI, I posted a poll on Instagram asking, hey, we're going Simone Rocha. Which one is the next one should I do? And you know what? You did me dirty and you went exactly 50-50, exact number of votes for each designer. And so I just picked one. I just picked one. Okay. Anyway, super quick disclaimer, principles of design or design principles are not a zoism. It's not some random thing that I made up that I feel like I should push onto you, but they are a set of principles that are studied around the world in art schools around the world by students and professionals studying all different kinds of art and design fields, you know, photography, graphic design, furniture, all the things. All right. Uh, but in this series, I am specifically applying these principles to fashion, studying them through a fashion lens. The first video went over emphasis using Scaparelli. The second one, we studied four kinds of repetition using McQueen. And today we are here studying unity and variety with Simone Rocha. And honestly, um, I'm really excited because I really love her work. I love her Goins work too, but Simone Rocha, like, I don't know. It just taps into my inner and outer girly glee. Okay, if you if you are one of my Patreon students, that you know how much my personal style um, leans towards what I call wearable drama, and uh, yeah, Simone Rocha. That brand is wearable drama in spades, and you'll see what if you're not familiar with her work, you will be at the end of this video. Technically, if you want to get real technical about it. Okay. Unity and variety are actually two different design principles. It's just that often I feel that they go so hand in hand that they should be studied together, especially in a fashion context. Unity is like the feeling of like harmonious balance throughout a work because there are all these shared elements of design repeating throughout the work gives a sense of completeness. These elements of design can be line, shape, form, color, texture, and we'll be going over what that means within a fashion context later in this video. Variety is variety. It's having enough different interesting things going on that the eye doesn't get bored. Unity and variety together are how designers can create a cohesive but well-merchandised fashion collection. You need the both. You need that cohesion, the direction of the collection, your trends, your themes, the vision that you're trying to give to people. But again, enough variety. And that means in a very creative sense, like offer people lots of pretty things to look at, different pretty things to look at, different renditions of your theme. But also in a very commercial business sense, you also need to be offering different silhouettes, different pants, different skirts, you know, enough coats for a fall winter collection, that sort of thing. How many times have I said fashion is the intersection of art and commerce? Okay, everyone take a drink. I'm kidding. Don't do that. Don't do that. I would never encourage that sort of wild behavior. <laughs> so let's break down what some of these elements of design mean within fashion. So color, color is pretty standard. I mean, color is color for everyone. But within fashion, it's not necessarily like using the same exact Pantone chip every collection, although Many brands do, okay? If you've watched any of my videos on brand aesthetics and house codes, you know, there's the Lanvin Blue, the Valentino Red, the Hermes Orange. Like, there are very specific colors associated with a house, and they keep using as close to that precise color as possible all throughout. Although, you have probably experienced this already. When you apply even the same Pantone number to different textures, they get interpreted a little bit differently. But other than that, you know, these colors become their brand, part of their house codes and get used often. Beyond that, though, there is a usage of color that is associated with most houses where we know that some 
some brands really go all out for color. Like if you look at Christopher John Rogers, you know, he uses a lot of different colors, but within each collection, there's kind of like a vibe to the whole thing. Like one is one collection might be like, honestly, I swear he does like a rainbow with every collection, but in one collection, it'll be more like a jewel tones vibe. And in another collection, it'll be more like a day glow fluorescent rainbow vibe. So his signature is having these rainbows in the collections, but the variety is that he will switch up what kind of rainbow it is season to season. Ellie Saab, he does a lot of pastels and he does a lot of jewel tones. And it kind of depends on the season and the exact pastels and the exact jewel tones change up every season. But we, he, he is often known to do pastels and or jewel tones. Okay. Gian Battista Valley does a lot of pastels. He loves a pop of red, but a lot of pastels, okay? He has a very distinct kind of sort of frothy color story. So it's not distinctly like, he always does baby blue, but it's really like pastels, mint greens, pinks, that sort of thing. Shape and form. Technically speaking, shape is two-dimensional, form is three-dimensional, but in fashion, we just talk about them in terms of shapes. And shapes can mean two things. It can mean the overall silhouette, of the garment or the outfit, the presentation that they're trying to, you know, push. But it can also be interior shapes. In fashion, we see that as, you know, Chanel's boxy skirt suit or the rose consistent oversized looks. And then interior shapes can be things like the Margiela tabby. Tabbies are, can come in a boot, a loafer, you know, it can come in a heel, it can come in a flat. So the the shoe tight, the heel, the flat, the boot, whatever, those are the silhouettes, but the tabby is kind of like the interior shape just distinct to the toe that is distinctly Margiela, right? And then we have YSL hearts. I've mentioned this before, but there's a lot of heart imagery. And I say Yves Saint Laurent because the OG, he's the one who started the heart imagery across his branding and across his clothing. And you don't really see a lot of hearts in Saint Laurent runways these days. They pop up here and there, but mostly you just see it in the merchandise online, like bracelets and, you know, earrings and things like that. Texture is obviously fabric, fabric manipulations, and uh, embellishments. Like uh, there are denim houses that are, of course, devoted to denim like diesel, and You've got Chanel's tweeds. You've got Valentino's affinity for feathers. And this is not an element of design, but this is something I would add for fashion would be kind of a theme, an overall theme of the whole house. Like there are a lot of brands that come from a heritage of leather work and luggage, you know, Prada, Loewe, Gucci, Louis Vuitton, those kinds of houses. And they are consistently you know, bringing that heritage forward in each collection, but often in new and hopefully fresh ways. There are companies like Moschino that consistently are funny, humorous, make fun of uh, pop culture. And then there are brands that are like very print forward, like Pucci. What's a Pucci collection without a Paisley? I would say the theme of Simone Rocha's house would be some sort of gothic Lolita fever dream meets an English traditionalist's worst nightmare with its deconstructed menswear um, meeting just like a very frothy, coquettish girlishness. It's tailored menswear with the stuffing beat out of it with references to lingerie and ruffles and bows. Okay. It is big. Big shapes, it's wearable shapes. And I wearable is not a dirty word. I just mean it is you are able to wear it. Okay, there's no cinched waists, there's not a ton of skin showing. I mean, there are some sheer looks, but it's often layered. And I love that the girlishness is pushed so much with a kind of a FU to traditional menswear shapes, a constant deconstruction of blazers, motorcycle jackets, trench coats, double-breasted Chesterfields, that sort of thing. I, I love the cheekiness of that. Um, 
It's a good time. It's a good time. The the when you look at all of Simone Rocha's collections, you see the consistency. You see the brand. It's it, it, there's no random collection when you're like, whose is this? Because you know some brands they do that. You know, like sometimes I'll make fun of some brands where they'll well, I'll say like, it looks like they're auditioning for the top Louis job. It looks like they're auditioning because they just like produce a collection and it's like what 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 is this you know but Simone Rocha is always consistent um but as you go through her collections you will see that she is consistently trying new things pushing the envelope within her own aesthetic and incorporating new motifs along the way and you can kind of see her growth and her fun Okay, and I'm just going to go ahead with the homework announcement before we deep dive onto Simone Rocha. I want you to do a deep dive on a designer just like I'm about to on screen. I want you to, the app I'm using is the Vogue Runway app, but I want you to pick a designer, any designer that has at least five years of collections under their belt so you do have um, a bunch of collections to look at. And I want you to go through the collections and I want you to create two lists for each collection, okay? Make a list of the unifying elements like their colors, their fabric usage, the prints, the embellishments. What do you see over and over again? And then list the variety. It's like you see a little pop of this and a little pop of that. Or there's like 16 coats, but they're all a little bit different in X, Y, Z ways. Okay, really get to the nitty gritty and write these things down. Don't just like kind of scan them in your mind. I want you to really write them down because it's really how you can register them in your brain. Okay, I'm always telling my color students on Patreon, go ahead and paint the chips. The muscle memory will help you learn the color. Okay? And then after you've done this with a few collections, I want you to make another list where you go over kind of as a brand, what are the unifying elements? This is how you identify house codes and brand signatures, identify the brand aesthetic and major themes, and then talk about in which ways the designer or CD mixes it up collection to collection, how it's not the same day in and day out, even while still continuing with the same house coats. Okay, so that's the homework. Now on to Simone Rocha's deep dive. So this is the Vogue Runway app, and this is the front page of Simone Rocha's page with all her collections. Just looking at the first outfit pictures, you can kind of get a feel for what she's about and kind of how she's progressed from 11, 12 years ago, okay? Because you see a lot of big shapes, not a lot of waist cinching, you know, not a lot of body con, not even a lot of fitted things, but a lot of big shapes. And you see a lot of feminine draping, ruffling, layering. There's a lot of black. There's a lot of pink. There's a lot of white. I'm fairly certain she has black, white, and some shade of pink in every single one of her collections. You know, earlier she was a little bit more minimalist. You know, like she had these roots in like lace and pink and ruffles and deconstruction and she kept going and going and pushing and pushing to be more avant-garde, to be more playful, to be more experimental. And I love that for her. I love that for her. Okay. So let's take a look at some of these individual collections. Okay. I mean, I feel like this is very stereotypical Simone Rocha. It's the pink. It's the three-dimensional flowers. She does use prints in almost every collection, but it's not like a huge, like I wouldn't say she's a print-driven brand. It's just another form of the flowers and the imagery that she uses throughout her collections. So it's definitely got the whole very feminine, 
draping, softness, the flouncing, the, the ribbons, the baby ribbons with the long tails that is often featured in many of her collections, three-dimensional flowers, and then again, always sort of like a deconstructed classic outerwear piece. Here is a windbreaker. You can see with the bungee cords and the elastics, the zipper, the, it's probably nylon um, with the zippered pockets and everything, but done in like a complete Simone sort of way. Simone Rocha also works with a lot of shears. There's typically some sheer layering in all of her collections, especially the spring summer ones. Here is another kind of stereotypical windbreaker style that has been done in shears layered over actual flowers but still with the bungee cords in a mesh okay. and often Simone Rocha's kind of takes on shears aren't really about showing the body it just is another layer okay sometimes you'll see a little but often it's really about layering and layering and layering and showing what's under the layering and that kind of thing menswear is kind of a recent thing for her and it just doesn't look any different okay it's still the big shapes it's still the classic outerwear references still with the flowers more flowers i have noticed throughout the collections that she will use amongst the black white and pink and then the pops of red will be like one color or like fabric that is very stereotypically menswear, like this dingy olive green. Sometimes she'll use a very menswear y looking uh, fabric, like a Prince of Wales check, a Glen check. You know, not that women can't wear those things, but again, playing with those stereotypes amongst so much feminine references. Here is Simone Rocha's take on the tuxedo jacket. Simone Rocha, especially in like kind of the second half of her career, has been pushing kind of the envelope on embellishments and where to place embellishments and what embellishments are. And they're often done in different and orth unorthodox ways, like these random patches in the middle of the torso, big three-dimensional flowers, pearls, You'll see pearls a lot. Here is a big bandeau collar shirt, lengthened with a poofy sleeve. Look at this collar, okay? The big collar is definitely also a Simone Rocha hallmark. She loves playing with a big collar. Let's move on to another collection. Again, black, white, pink, and one like very dirty, grungy, dull color, this olive drab. But the olive drab is done in a way that's playful. Again, the pops of red as always. And again, this sort of like military meets motorcycle, utilitarian jacket turned ultra feminine with sheer ruffle layering and big blusani sleeves big shirt collar like all the hallmarks are there but this distinctly looks so different from the collection i just showed you because she's constantly coming up with new ways to bring you that big collar new ways to incorporate ruffles new ways to incorporate shears again this is another one of shears the big three-dimensional flower the pops of red and yet you couldn't place this on that first collection. It would look extremely out of place because the way everything done is so different. More three-dimensional flowers, big collar, embellishment, ruffles, shears, layers, pearls. So like if you were to write down a list of all the Simone Rocha cool elements and you listed them in every collection, it would start looking a little bit tedious. But then you would have to think, oh no, but every collection, it's always a little bit different, okay? It's a motorcycle jacket base done in mesh, covered in flowers with a big poofy sleeve with ruffles. Like, it's really like just, 
it's not even marrying. <laughs> It's like they're, they're not getting married. It's It harmonizes into an outfit, but it's almost like they're fighting each other, but like beautifully, almost like a very kind of romantic wrestling. You take that as you will. <laughs> I know how that just sounded. Very big shapes, some of the print. And this one, again, you have the black, white, and the baby pink, the olive drab. And then you have a couple more pastels in here. And then she will occasionally do a pop of silver like she did in the first collection I showed you. Which, honestly, I don't think are her strongest works. I don't, I don't really know how the pops of the metallics really work with the rest. Lest you think that I am some sort of Simone Rocha uber fan and I cannot critique her work, there are definitely things that I think sometimes don't work. There are tons of bridal sort of themes and motifs and looks um, that are incorporated, but I think that is part of that whole goth gothic Lolita reference where those kinds of dresses also have that bridal sort of edge to them but this is bridal meets like baseball jacket with the knit collar and then you've got these straps in here very cool so this is a rare sort of not bodycon it's definitely not bodycon but fitted to the body look from simone rocha and it's sheer but it's over a bunch of opaque so you don't really see anything and just the way she does it with the layering and the prints and the unorthodox embellishment placements it's a very distinctly her brand when i see simone rocha's menswear i in my brain it registers to me as how androgynous unisex genderless clothes should look because a lot of the time when you talk about genderless clothing now, it's a lot of untailored menswear, okay? It's a lot of pants and sweaters that are shapeless enough that any kind of body can go inside them. And that's boring, okay? But this kilt with the embellishment, this shirt with the flowers, where it's really a merging of the masculine and the feminine with these shoes, my goodness, you know, this is a dress. It's a shirt dress with pipe cleaner flowers. It's not pipe cleaner, but it kind of gives that look with all these embellishments on the accessories. Please, someone send me this jacket. I will wear this every day depending on the weather, but amazing. This is how I think of genderless clothing. It's, but again, it is the classics the outerwear classics meets the feminine it's the pink white and black plus a punch of pastel plus the olive drab or some similar masculine color in this collection it was a lot of brown velvet which i don't know if it worked this was not my favorite collection ever fall 2017 with so much heavy brown and the reason i didn't like these coats was they were very more like the way everybody else does deconstruction. Oh, we moved a pocket up here. And we made this, like the traditional Simone big collar, but it's just not as interesting as some of the ways that she does deconstruction. Like this whole, like the hanging of the pockets with on top of this other pockets. As a pocket lover, I approve. But this one got a little too heavy for me, a little too standard in the coats, the heavy coats. Okay, then this coat done in lace, amazing. I love it. Look at the size of those pocket bags. Okay, but it moved a little too much. The, the mannish classic menswear was winning in this collection and I didn't like it. This, I love. But I do love how enormous these pockets are the scale is just so fun and playful and cheeky and so you know I could still forgive some of this stuff the the playing with the pockets it just almost this this whole collection kind of screams like Simone someone told Simone Rocha you have to make your stuff more wearable and boo you whoever told that to her 
go away now. Again, the pop of red. There's still a lot of her signatures. She does pops of leather, pops of fur, always the pops of red. This is more red than usual, but still pops of red amongst the black, white, and pink. I think at this point, you see where I'm going is, I think you have a very good idea of all the unifying elements that make Simone Rocha's brand so very uniquely Simone Rocha. And then you can see how there are all of these elements that, change season to season like playing with the scale of the sleeves the scale of the collars the scale of the pockets always throwing in the pastels mixed like all her color stories are black white and pink plus one very stereotypically masculine color dark brown olive drab and then a, another extra pastel a pop of red not very print heavy but occasionally there lots of layers Shears done in layers, ruffles, bows, three-dimensional flowers, you know, a lot of fun, a lot of fun. And that was Unity and Variety studying Simone Rocha. I hope you please do the homework. Um, studying Unity and Variety, choosing a designer, uh, whichever designer you want that has about five years at least of collections for you to study. And make notes on their unifying elements and then the, the variety they show even within their unifying elements, like all the exaggerated colors exaggerated collars being a unifying element, but like such a variety of big collars, right? As usual, please give this video a thumbs up if you learned something new today. Share, subscribe, all the ways you show me love. Drop me all your questions below and I will see you in the next video.